problems we have, climate change. <laughs> this is a big one, but how would you go about trying to help us protect our environment better? Yeah, that's such a broad question. I mean, I guess it depends. You know, I've been saying this a lot, so I, I'll just pick one issue out of the many that I think you could talk about. You know, I wrote a piece for the Ma'alaya Bay, uh, the issue there with injection wells, mm -hmm. where I took uh, an opposing position from the mayor. In fact, I sided with the county council on that, um, using money from the Clean Water Revolving Fund Clean Water Act Revolving Fund, state fund to uh, help to fix that that disaster that's occurring in the Bay. You know, the, de the determination of who's responsible ultimately for the cost can come later. And I've compared it to someone in a car accident being taken to the ER. I mean, nobody expects that person to show their insurance card before they get treated. Obviously, the doctors are trying to take care of the more important problem. And right now, the more important problem for us is taking care of the damage that's occurring in that bay. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a duty, well, I know there's a duty that the county charter says so. Environmental management mm -hmm. is the responsibility of the county. And so I feel like we need to step in, especially since there was a resolution or a way to resolve it that the council came up with. I think we should support that decision, fix the problem, and then send the bill to whoever we got to send the bill to uh, after it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what's more important is what's happening. I think the access deer problem poses another environmental hazard to us, especially since they're threatening the watersheds. Uh, I think the overpopulation of the deer is a huge problem. It affects ranchers, farmers, motorists. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, there's an opportunity for us to exercise some sustainability if we can do workforce development, not only to have the hunters do the hunting, but the processors of that, of that deer meat, getting the Department of Health inspectors, getting mobile slaughterhouses, getting large landowners on board to assist us, allowing hunters to hunt there, bring that population down from over 70,000 back to where it needs to be manageable is 20,000. So that's an environmental hazard waiting to happen, but it's also an opportunity uh, for us to create diversity in our economy, to have an entirely new um, industry. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that hunters talk to me about all the time is how they will use a carcass for dog food, mm -hmm. which obviously the Humane Society spends a great deal of their money on food. They could be a resource to, to receive that. So instead of just eradication, which I know is the number one solution for farmers and ranchers and people deeply impacted by this by this problem if we could just twist that a little bit into an industry mm -hmm. which is highly sustainable think about uh think about crops you have to plant them you have to water them you have to weed them you have to harvest them you have to take a deer you get a hunter you know he dispatches the deer you take it to be processed now you have a resource that you can feed to Maybe the homeless community, those who, folks who help with the homeless, feeding homeless, stores, restaurants, markets, mm -hmm. uh, you know, selling them to into the uh, online. So I think we sort of kill two birds with one stone in the mm -hmm. sense of fixing the nuisance and also creating industry. So I'm excited about that, but I'm mostly concerned about the threat to the watershed.